It's another raw video from your favorite YouTube scout, Draft Raw Authentic. Yes, I am finally here making another video. Like I said, it's a raw one, so there will be no edits. Now, this is not the typical place that I usually do my videos. Right now, little situation. I can't do it at the spot I usually do it. Um, but I'm still in kind of the same area. I do it in the basement, so I'm still in the basement. I'm actually in the laundry room, which is, I guess, this is kind of stupid that I'm doing it here. But I have to put out a video, and this is the week four rookie standouts. Now, if this is your first time seeing any of my content, when I when I'm doing this uh, week, when I do the weekly rookie standouts, I'm not going by how the rookie played. I'm just going by the stats. So sometimes stats may not tell how good a player may have played or, you know, so on and so on. Um, you even have situations where a, a quarterback, I saw it in the Falcons game, Matt Ryan threw it up, Julio Jones caught it. Um, it was no time left on in the game. You know, they needed a touchdown to win. It was just a regular, you know, he just catch it, had a bunch of yards. It was like a, what, 60, 70 yard uh, pass or whatever. And, uh, or whatever it was 40 yards whatever it was but it's those type of situations where you may have a rookie that literally caught the last ball of the game and it didn't really do nothing you know what i mean it, he just caught it and didn't really do much but he could have over 100 yards or i mean honestly he could have over just literally 50 yards and i will put his name down because he had the stats so that's how i really work it out so you know what Let's just get started with the rookie standouts. I knew I, I knew I kind of little got a little tangent there, but I needed to explain it. So anyway, so let's get into it. With the first game, Minnesota Vikings versus the Los Angeles Rams at the Rams Stadium, Thursday night football. The two rookies that stood out, one from Minnesota, one from LA, Mike Hughes, seven tackles, one forced fumble, and uh, Jonathan Franklin. I think that's his name, is uh, one tackle, one sack, one forced fumble. And when it comes to tackles, the, the stats that I use, what I see, they actually separate tackles, tackles for loss, and sacks. So it's not all accumulated together. So he did have one tackle, one regular tackle, and one sack that was a forced fumble. So just to put that out there. In the next game, we have Cincinnati versus Atlanta. Once again, Jesse Bates has stood out. In the quarter of this year, there have been a couple of guys that have stood out at each and every week, and Jesse Bates' name has popped up each and every week. Another eight tackles to his resume. On Atlanta side, we had two guys. One was Edo Smith, seven carries, 35 yards. That's not huge production to me. You know, you got to at least get about 50, 40, 50 yards to, to, for, for me to really put your name down. But if you score a touchdown or if a defense player make a sack or interception, it doesn't matter. I'm putting your name down. And Edo Smith had a touchdown. And then obviously the rookie standout, Kevin Ridley, third week in a row. Kevin Ridley, four catches, 54 yards, two touchdowns. This dude has been phenomenal these past three weeks. Week one, he didn't do much. But the last three weeks, he's definitely made just, you know, made himself worth the first round pick that the Atlanta Falcons used on him. Then the next game, you had Tampa Bay versus Chicago. There was no rookie standouts. Nobody that stood out as a rookie in that game. So going on to the next game, we had Detroit versus Dallas. And we had two standouts for Detroit. One was Carrion Johnson, nine, nine rushes, 55 yards and a touchdown. And the other was Deshaun Hand, who had three tackles, one sack, one forced fumble, and two tackle for losses. And then Leighton Vander Esch for the Dallas Cowboys has six tackles. And I've seen his name for like at least I think the last three weeks as well. So that's another guy who whose name has been popping up a little, you know, for a while now. And, you know, he I don't think he has a chance to be a defensive rookie of the year, but he's showing proof that he is a good solid player uh, that the Dallas Cowboys definitely use with their first round pick. In the next game, we have Buffalo versus Green Bay. And in and for Buffalo, we had one, two, three guys actually make some pretty good plays. Even though they had zero points. Kind of crazy, but it happens. T uh, I was about to say Terrell. Tremaine Edmonds, six tackles, one pass deflection. Solid game. He is one of the other guys. His name has popped up each and every week since week one. Then you have T uh, Teron Johnson, who had five tackles, one sack, one forced fumble. 
And of course, one of my favorite safeties in this draft was Siren Neal, who had one tackle and one, tackle and one sack. So the, the stats the stats are pretty solid. You know, you had two sacks from two rookies, uh, four fumble for one of them, and tackles all the way together is about equals about 12 tackles. They did pretty good. It's just the offense didn't do much. And then we look on the then we look for the Green Bay Packers, and two defensive players had pretty good games as well. Uh, Jair Alexander had two tackles, but also had a pick. And Josh Jackson, their other corner who they picked uh, in the second round compared to Jair, who went in the first, had five tackles and two pass deflections. Pretty good games for both of those two players. They may have their cornerback tandem for the future, so we'll see about that. Then in the Houston-Indianapolis game, Houston Kiki Kuti had 11 catches, 109 yards. That is huge for uh, Kiki. Now with Kiki, I wasn't Kiki, do you love? Let me stop. But I wasn't the biggest fan of Kiki coming out. Um, and not to say I wasn't a fan of him. I just thought of him just kind of being a gadget type of guy, gadget type of receiver. Um, nothing more than that. And, I mean, obviously you want to get these games where he's going to put up these big numbers. But I got to see it week in and week out. And then when I start seeing it then, then he can – then pretty much that I'm wrong about him as a player and I need to reevaluate the way I value players from the tape that I do watch but I do have to say you know this is a good start for Kiki and hopefully and I pray that most rookies do that try their hardest and do really good but hopefully he can keep this up then Justin Reed five tackles one pass deflection and on Indianapolis side Naheem Himes nine catches I'm going to see nine rushes, 60, no, sorry, nine catches, 63 yards, and two touchdowns. So that was really good for him. Now, the big one, the guy that's definitely going to win Defensive Rookie of the Year, Darius Leonard, his name has popped up each and every week with at least a sack, a forced fumble, fumble recovery, whatever. His name has popped up, and he had 13 tackles, one sack, and one tackle for loss. And then, obviously, their second-round pick, their other second-round pick, uh, Kiko Moture, had uh, one tackle and a half a sack. So these two rookies, I've seen uh, Ture name popped up for the second week in a row, but Darius Leonard has been an absolute beast, and I told y'all he was going to be really, really good. In the next game, did uh, Jets versus Jacksonville. No rookie stood out, so I have nothing for them. Then we have Miami and New England. New uh, for Miami, Minka, Minka Fitzpatrick, ten tackles, interception, two pass deflections, and Jerome Baker, who was the second time on the list, showing up again with ten tackles. Now going to New England side, we have Sony Michelle, who had twenty five rushes, one hundred and twelve yards in the touchdown. Good for Sony Michelle right there. And on their defensive side of the ball, they had J.C. Jackson, Merlin alum, Merlin grad, doing his thing out there. He went undrafted, which was kind of crazy, but he had one interception in this game. Then moving on to Philly versus Tennessee. Uh, Philadelphia had cornerback from Pittsburgh, uh, Avante Maddox, get one interception. And then uh, for Tennessee, Harold Landry showed up. Their second round pick, four tackles, one sack, one forced fumble, one tackle for loss. Really good, uh, i say a pretty solid game for uh, Harold Landry. Seattle versus Arizona, no real rookie stood out. Um, and then San Francisco versus the Chargers. Fred Warner, whose name has also popped up each and every week, 10 tackles. And then Derwin James with seven tackles, one sack, and two pass deflections for the Los Angeles Chargers. Now, moving on to New Orleans versus the Giants. You have, uh, New Orleans didn't really have a rookie standout, but the Giants did. Uh, Saquon Barkley, 10 rushes, 44 yards and a touchdown. I told y'all, this is the type of game Saquon will have. This is the type of games he will have. And six, six catches, 56 yards, zero touchdowns. So overall, he did have over 100, well, he had actually just on 100 scrimmage, scrimmage yards with a touchdown and about 16 touches. And that's what Saquon Barkley is going to be. He's going to give you the best of both worlds. Um, but don't be surprised if he doesn't have those big rushing games like you think he's going to have every single game. And then B.J. Hill, who had two tackles and one sack, another sack for B.J. Hill. He's starting to show and prove how good of a player he is. And I told y'all he was a beast. Look back at those. Look back at my content, and you will see what I'm talking about when I said B.J. Hill was a beast. Now we got Cleveland versus Oakland. Nick Chubb, three rushes, 105 yards, two touchdowns. I have no clue why they didn't give him the ball again. How you had three? That's literally the three rushes was his three touches. I don't understand it. 
and both of the he had two rushes that went for big gains. One of his rushes didn't do that, you know, that well or whatever, or it did okay, but those two touchdowns is huge. I told y'all Nick Chubb may very well be the best running back in this draft class. Now, I can't put it like, I can't just say, oh, yeah, he is the best because he had this one game 100 yards. Obviously, he is the backup to Carlos Hyde, but give Nick Chubb a chance. I guarantee you Nick Chubb can pull out more games. Now, it won't be three for 105, but I feel as though he can pull out more games where he does rush for more than, and I won't say 100, but at least more than 80 yards. He is that good of a back. And then Antonio Callaway for uh, Cleveland, three catches, 54 yards. Okay. Baker Mayfield, 21 of 41, which is it's around like 50% or a little over 50%, which is not that good. But I did hear about a lot of the drops that the receivers had with uh with Baker Mayfield. So, you know, that those stats are a little, you know, skewed. Plus, one of his interceptions, the ball did pound. Uh, bounce off a of receiver's hand. I didn't see the game. This is just what I've heard. Somebody told me about this. So then you have uh, 295 yards, two touchdowns, and the two picks, obviously. And he had two fumbles, which wasn't that good, which wasn't a good thing. But like I said, the, the team kind of, even though they put up a lot of points, the team didn't do that great as a whole um, when it comes to uh, making plays and making sure that you don't leave it in the ref's hands. They didn't do that good of a job. Um, and then uh, Gerard Avery, uh, or Gernard Avery, however you say his name, three tackles, half a sack. Maurice Hurst had a pretty darn good game for Oakland, who had four tackles, one sack, one pass deflection. Now, Baltimore, Pittsburgh, um, what's been common about Baltimore is Kenny Young getting a lot of tackles and his name being on the list. He, his name was on the list for the first three weeks, and this is the first time his name is not on this list. And actually, there's no Baltimore player, rookie, that's on the list. And there's only one Pittsburgh player, and I almost didn't put him on the list because I just felt as though... They yeah they were stat their stats but I saw the game obviously I'm a Baltimore Ravens fan so I saw the game and there were situations and it's kind of that's why I said I want to just deal with stats but I saw him get burnt twice in that game actually three times where it was three different occasions I believe where John Brown was going deep and Terrell Edmonds was behind him so uh seven tackles though and one for uh fumble recovery so that's solid but. He didn't do as good as the stats would say when it came to just pure coverage skills. But I got to look at the stats, so it is what it is. And then in the last game that we just saw yesterday, Kansas City versus Denver, Armani Watts, one tackle, one sack. Phillip and then for Denver, Philip Lindsay, 12 rushes, 69 yards in the touchdown. Royce Freeman, 8 rushes, 67 yards in the touchdown. Cortland Sutton. Three receptions, 51 yards, zero touchdowns. And also, Phillip Lindsay did have one punt return for 32 yards. So, that was pretty good for Phillip Lindsay coming back from the last game where he uh, we got ejected. So, it is what it is. Um, these are all the rookie standouts for week four. I hope you like this video. hope you definitely hit that like button. If you want to see more content from Draft for Authentic, please subscribe. I guarantee you there is more content coming out. I'm, a, I'm making a new series that will come out. Uh, it's, kind of a, it's kind of a double series, if you can say. It's a series called Was I Wrong? And the other part of the series was I Think I Was Right. And basically, it's going to be me talking about certain players that from this 2018 draft that I either said that I wasn't a big fan of or I was a huge fan of and we're going to see if I was wrong about that or if I was right we're going to we're going to kind of switch it up and we're going to do it like that but um I'm trying to think of another series to do for y'all to give y'all more content to give y'all more rookie stuff overall to to talk about each and every team in the NFL and not just one or two teams like some people do and I I'm not throwing shade at nobody I'm just saying there is there's a lot of people out there that literally only talk about their team and I'm giving y'all more than just one or two teams. I'm giving y'all a whole list of a bunch of teams. So I hope y'all subscribe. I hope y'all share this video so other people can see my videos and can see my content and subscribe and we can build this draft community that I know I would like and you would like definitely. Once again, this is Draft for Authentic. I thank you for watching. Goodbye.